Do you have a number in your head of what can be done? No, uh, no, not really. I'm not really thinking about anything like that right now. I'm uh, happy to walk away with my, my second World Championship gold medal coming to this competition, being the defending champion. It was a, it's a little bit of a, a different experience that I'm not used to all that, all that much, and uh, it's a different, a little bit different type of pressure. But uh, yeah, I'm just happy that I was able to get the job done and be able to come out on top. Not just one question from you, Armand. Do you feel any disappointment? because of the misery the court was a few millimeters maybe. I feel pretty good. I feel pretty okay. Uh, today was a competition and that, that was the way everything was set up. These these guys they they just jumped too well. Yeah. They jumped too well and they pushed me they pushed me really hard and I had to take a I had to take some jumps today and uh, you know getting that 95, 6, 605, 610 I think naturally you're just not gonna be as, as sharp as you may need to be after that to be able to do anything too crazy. But um, yeah, I mean today I think it was the way everything set up and the, the way these guys jumped. It was just a, it was just a competition. Uh, Armando, you are still 23, but you have everything in uh, your uh, event. Uh, are you ready to try something different? Uh, not the uh, go vote. Yeah, maybe. I think I think I might just start doing like long jump or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, th but these guys are, these guys are young too. And all these guys sitting next to me are young. So I, I know that for the next coming years, I'm going to have some really good competition. I have some guys that are going to be pushing the heck out of me. So uh, for me, I'm, I'm really excited for the future. Damn, I'm the oldest one here though. Maybe. <laughs> How old are you? I'm 28 now. This Dang. Year. Yeah, I'm the oldest one here. <laughs> Damn, the boss. <laughs> 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 Brian with uh, Team USA. Mondo, uh, congratulations again. Well, well done, of course. Um, obviously, besides this uncanny ability to jump high, you're also very consistent. Uh, six consecutive mates tonight, obviously impressive. Uh, what, what's the key to also being so consistent? And, and following up on that, if you don't mind, uh, two consecutive World Cup titles. A guy named Sergey had six in a row. Is uh, that something uh, you, you can chase uh, in the future? I guess that would be nice, but uh, I think I have a few more to go, it sounds like, before I get to six. So I'll probably worry about three, and then after three, maybe four, before I start getting a little bit too far ahead of myself. But um, I don't know. I don't know. As far as the... The consistency, I think a lot of that is also just having a really good team, having a really good team around you and um, making the right decisions because pole vault's a, it's a very technical event and it's uh, there's a lot of game time decision making that people don't really realize that when you're on the track to make sure you're on the right pole, right run, right grip, right And um, but yeah, all, the, all these little things that really add up to those, those crucial makes and so, uh, you know, I know that my father is always, he, he knows me better than probably I know myself, especially my jump. And I know that more more times than not, we're gonna make the right decisions on, on what to do. Do have a question from you? First, I just wanna say congratulations to all of you. Um, this question that I have is for Mondo. So the LSU Track and Field Twitter page absolutely mm. loves you. I feel like every time, <laughs> You, Shakira, or someone else from LSU steps on the track. Like, there's always a viral tweet about mm -hmm. you guys. So, I just want you to talk a little bit about like how awesome it is being out here with so many other LSU Tigers that are not only just competing, but competing to the highest level, just like you. Well, we love LSU, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's a, it's a pretty surreal thing actually, because uh, you know, you look at somebody like Shakira, you look at Japan, who was my roommate in college, who just has his first global, global medal with the that silver and the high jump and um, don't forget about just, Vernon and Vernon of course <laughs> but I was going to get to that point because he wasn't in college when we were in college he was in college with my brother actually so um, yeah I mean just it, it's 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 crazy to think about where we are now especially since it felt like it was just yesterday where we were just freshmen just cutting up at Tiger Lane and just being stupid and just having all these crazy fun and immature memories together and now we're here on the on the world stage and doing what we're doing it's it's um it's unbelievable that's why you go to LSU because you want to see on yourself with greatness and you know that's what obviously that's what we showed that we have 
before we move on, any question to the server? Yes. Okay. A question actually to, to the silver and bronze medals. So Armand brings big popularity, it becomes the main event, maybe frustrating also, it's a difficult one to win. What are, what are your feelings about being in the pole vault in this era? Yeah, you bet. Are you ever going to let us win one? Or... <laughs> um, it's, honestly, I just think it's awesome to be a part of this era in pole vaulting. Like, if Mondo's out there jumping in close to 620, most meets, jumping over six meters every meet, and we're just there soaking up the atmosphere, getting, getting some of the like, exposure that he brings to the sport through us as well. It's honestly just a privilege to be out there with the guy because he's pushing the sport to a place that it's never been before. And yeah, I'm sure EJ and Chris both agree that we wouldn't we wouldn't want to be in any other era of pole vaulting other than, other than maybe yeah maybe budget zero we probably could have been. Here. <laughs> um, nah, it's honestly the best time uh, in men's pole vault that I've that's ever been, and it's just a privilege to share it with these boys. What are your thoughts, EJ, Christopher? Well, it, it's a bit good and bad. Like Mondo exists, I guess a bit good and bad. I mean, it's good that we're, you know, we're being pushed to do a little bit more than what I think we would do without Mondo. At the same time, it's it's tough to jump six meters and take second. You know, like I think that that's the first time in the history of this has to be. Yeah. So, I mean, we're happy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't really have any complaints. I mean. Um, you know, one of the one of the biggest jobs, of course, that we come in here, we have to try and jump high. That's kind of our main job. But one of the more underlying things that every track and field athlete has is to try to grow the popularity of the sport, and specifically for the United States. And you know, Mato growing up in Louisiana, he can kind of attest to this. Track and field is not big or popular in the United States. We have football, basketball, um, and major league events for every single sport. And track and field is not one of them. So, to be able to have Mondo give that exposure on the American side and the Swedish side. We've got every continent covered from Asia to Australia to the Americas, you know, because we have all these great athletes. It's it's doing more than, you know, it's cool to see Mondo jump high, but it's cool to see the exposure he has on the world and that we have on the world for track and field as a whole. So our job is to jump well and do our, and you know do that thing, but at the same time we have to make sure that people know what track and field is. Next question. Here on the first one. Question to Mondo, um, the past to any gold medal is never easy, but what's been the most difficult part for you this year, getting back on that top of that podium? Yeah, I mean, I think everybody's just jumping really well. And I think that, uh, you know, tonight I would imagine has to be the best world championship final that there's ever been in the pole team. And it was, it was just at that kind of level tonight. And um, yeah, these, I think it's, I think it's basically just that. And you know, these, these kind of bars like 605 and Everything above that, which I which I had to make to be able to beat EJ here, it's is no joke. It's no joke, and I know I know for me that if I I go there and I connect with a good jump, then I then I definitely have a good chance to be able to make it. But it's, it's not always that easy. It's not always that easy. It doesn't always work out that way. So uh, for me, just trying to trying to go out there and jump as high as I possibly can. I know they, I know these guys are going to push me really hard. So uh, yeah, I don't know. And the year is old. Like what's been the hardest part? I don't know. I don't know if the, the year's necessarily been so unbelievably hard. Now, I mean, it's just a year. I don't know. We had the World Championship this year, so it's one of these years where you're just you're trying to build up to this moment, and you know, I wanted to make sure that I can say a really good performance for here because I knew that that's what it was going to take to beat these guys. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess the years the years still in progress, but uh, thus far, I think it's been it's been really nice. Okay. My name is my name is Mian with China Media Group. Uh, my question is to EJ. I know you're half Chinese, half Filipino. Have you yeah. ever thought of representing China someday? Uh, oh damn! <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm representing the Philippines right now. I'm very happy about it, and um, I'm very proud of the heritage that my mom brings. And I think part of the thing, the way I approach a lot of stuff, is also from my Chinese heritage. And I'm I'm happy to represent Asia as well in this year. So. Right now, I'm happy with both of you. Next question. Hi, Mondo. We uh, saw some moving scenes during the warm up when you and Greg sort of just uh, paused to pay, uh, pay a tribute to Noah Lyles when he received his gold medal with the uh, American national anthem playing. Uh, sort of like a, some nice moving scenes there. Could you, could you tell us a little bit about that moment? 
what did I do? And you just uh, paused during the warm up when uh, Riles received his gold medal when the, when the American anthem was playing, and you seemed to be. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, uh, I don't know. It's I am American also, so I, I guess it's just respect for the situation, respect for the athlete also. So uh, I don't know. I didn't think that much of it. I think that if it was anybody up there, no matter what national anthem you know, it would be, you know, if I if I'm not doing something too too crazy in the moment, then I'm gonna stop and show my appreciation for for their country and what they've done for their country. So. Uh, yeah, and I'm also American, like I said. <laughs> Just last question. I, I saw a quote here tonight that you uh, felt a little pressure as uh, the defending champion. I think that's like the first time I ever hear you talk about pressure like that. Now that it's the job is done, could you tell us a little bit more about the pressure you have felt coming up to this championship? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's it's a different situation, and uh, you know, I'm. I'm I'm so fortunate for the situation that I'm in and to be able to collect the titles that I've, that I've been able to do, which is pretty much all the titles that you can ask for as a, as a pole vaulter. So now I'm going on these second rounds of things where I'm, I'm going to all these competitions as the defending champion. And it's, uh, I don't know, it's, it's kind of the same thing, but different actually. But it's, uh, yeah, I mean, I try to try to stay on top. That's a, that's a lot different thing than the, the climb to, to get to the top because, uh, you know, it feels like you, your whole life you want to be in the, in the situation, and I wanted to be in the situation that I am now, and when it's here, it's just kind of like, okay, stay here. That question? No? Oh. Yes. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Dali Volochek from uh, Sport Hub Media Ukraine. Ernest, a question uh, for you. Two times six meter this year for you. Uh, do you consider this season to be breakthrough for you? And if not, uh, what you should do to consider a season a breakthrough for you? I mean, I, I think I'm. I had a really good season, jumping two six meters, pretty consistent at 580, 590 range. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, it is a, a breakthrough season. And one small additional uh, question: uh, Can you tell us? Uh, can you tell us about your work with your coach? Because oh. uh, coach uh, Sergey Lubska, coach, uh, what, what does he give to you? Well, I owe my career to this guy. Um, I trained with him when I was jumping 490, so he literally made me jump a meter higher than my PR when I first met him. And it was not, I was not like young. I met him when I was 18. So I was a terrible pole vaulter when I was young. So <laughs> I'm happy to be part of this group and uh, I owe it to that guy.